for the worldwide secret combination to overthrow the freedom of all nations, there must be a crisis that is commensurate with their ambitions. There must be a crisis that spans the globe and puts every nation at risk. There are only a handful of such crises. The global deep state in this citation refers to the global secret combination. The ongoing COVID-19 pandemic fits the criteria for a crisis sufficient to initiate the secret combination's plan to seize power globally. Currently, there are over 300,000 claimed dead in over 150 nations. As we shall see, the conspiracy is using this pandemic to forcibly take down national governments, especially in the United States, and install autocratic regimes in their place. The conspiracy, following the famous dictum of former Obama Chief of Staff, Rahm Emanuel, never let a serious crisis go to waste, is using it to do things it normally could not do under normal circumstances. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. With the wide scope and fast pace at which the events surrounding the pandemic are taking place, we cannot provide an extensive blow-by-blow -blow account with any supporting evidence. Instead, we will outline the primary actions by the left and the principles on which they are operating. The rest should be clear for those who have eyes to see, while the willingly ignorant will remain so. First, it must be understood that before the COVID-19 crisis came about, the left had already attempted to remove President Trump from office repeatedly. The first attempted soft coup, the so-called Russian hoax, began when President Obama instructed his FBI boss, James Comey, to continue the spying on the Trump campaign so that Obama could act against Trump. It was January 20th, the last day of the Obama administration, Outgoing National Security Advisor Susan Rice sat down at her desk to write her final memo. Rice described the presidential transition, which had been underway for months. Then she wrote this. During a meeting two weeks before, quote, President Obama said he wants to be sure that as we engage with the incoming team, we are mindful to ascertain if there is any reason we cannot share information fully as it relates to Russia. Now, Rice did not explain why Obama's staff felt it might not be possible to give intelligence on Russia to Donald Trump's staff, or for that matter, why the Obama people thought they had the right to withhold national security information from an incoming American president who had just won a national election. But Rice didn't need to elaborate. There was only one possible explanation for this. Donald Trump could very well be a Russian agent. Barack Obama himself said he believed that was possible. In Rice's words, quote, the president asked Jim Comey to inform him if anything changes in the next few weeks that should affect how we share classified information with the incoming team. Comey said he would. Now, what exactly does that mean? Here's what it means. The president of the United States turned to the head of the FBI, the most powerful law enforcement official in America, and said, continue to secretly investigate my chief political rival so that I can act against him. Comey's response, yes, sir. That's what Obama was saying, openly. Secondly, deep stater Rod Rosenstein appointed a special counsel, Robert Mueller, to investigate Trump's ties with Russia. It was a frantic search for anything usable to impeach the sitting president. This effort failed as well. President Trump was battered and bruised by the ongoing spying and investigation, but not removed from office. The left then chose a more direct approach, impeachment. They had no real evidence of a treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors as required by the Constitution. Instead, the left chose to use a transcript of a call between the U.S. president and the newly elected president of Ukraine as an excuse to charge Trump with abuse of power, a charge not included in the Constitution as a basis for impeachment. In the end, the president was impeached, but not convicted.